Hi there, it's Dr. Guerrero. I just wanted to give you some study tips and tricks to help you start to prepare if you haven't done so already for the exams that are approaching quickly. And, and how I'm going to model and demonstrate will be how you can study and use your resources for not just this class, but any, any class, okay? So I am in the course shell. And we're in module one, so I'm just going to use the content from module one. Um, I've opened the exam review, okay? And then, um, so you just click here to get to the exam review. Then I have also opened the PowerPoints for chapter one and the lecture video for chapter one, all right? And I, I got all of that from inside the course shell, okay? If you're in a class that I instruct, there is always a review. And if there's not one, all you have to do is reach out because it's probably because I forgot to post it. Not all professors provide reviews and my reviews don't necessarily mean that the course is easier. I just try to give you a little bit more direction on how to prepare, okay? So um, I already have all of this open and I have a lot of screens open as a result of that. So I have my review open, all right? Um, I have the PowerPoints open, okay? And I also have the lecture video open. All right, so what I suggest doing and science, there's a lot of scientific evidence that says if you can hear it, see it, and also write it or type it, it helps to consolidate that information into long-term memory. So it helps you study. You just have to get it in different modalities. So hearing, seeing it, and writing it. Okay, if you've listened to any of my videos previously, I've talked about how to passively listen to the lecture. What I suggest doing is listening to the lecture review or lecture video while you're doing something other than study, just so you can become familiar with the language that I use as I'm going through the lecture. Then come back and do an active listen, which is where you're sitting down and you're actively putting your exam review together. Okay, I've also pointed out the fact that for these science courses at the collegiate level, we don't ever, ever ask, what's the definition of? So in order to make sure you're comfortable enough with the content, you definitely need to know the definition so you know what the word is, but you also need to know how to apply it. What does that mean in real life, okay? So um, a lot of students who try to study on their own are making flashcards of definitions, and the definitions will help you recognize the words in the question, but probably not answer the question, okay? So making sure that you can apply it. So I um, what I suggest doing is I would start, and I muted this lecture, so I would listen to it, and um, you can also turn on the closed caption so you can hear what I'm saying, and it's being typed out for you, okay? And then also you can follow along with the PowerPoint. So you can see that I'm on this slide within this lecture video. And I kind of give some information on that, okay? Um, as we continue through the lecture, it will go on, and I'm gonna pause this, it will go on to the next slide. Biology is the study of life. So you can listen to me explain that. And then go to your review. One of the first terms is biology. So I'll start there with, it's a study of life. And I do make suggestions to put this in a Google doc so that you can access it from Google apps on your phone and study it if you're like on your lunch break at work or if you're waiting in the car line for your kids. Um, maybe you're in between meetings and you're, you know, you're trying to study your content so you can just pull up your exam review. So I have that biology is the study of life. And um, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on biology, but some, some applications of that, like a biologist. Bio means life. And then ology is study of. Oh, study of. Okay, so a biologist is someone who studies life. Okay, and when we think of life, we're not just thinking of humans, which is what I introduced in this uh, lecture. We're talking about all living things. So um, perhaps somebody who studies plants. 
would be a botanist. And I kind of talk about that. Um, somebody who just studies animals is a zoologist. Okay, so just those are different types of application for the term biology. Okay, then um, as I continue through the lecture, I talk about characteristics of living systems. Okay, and I talk about seven points here specifically. All right, then I go into each of those seven points. So if you look at my notes, they're structured in an outline type form so that they stay organized. And I let you know, hey, these slides go together, this content goes together. So um, I do like an intro of that content and then I go into a little bit more detail as you're going, as I go into the content. All right, so um, like for example, um, characteristics of living systems, all living organisms, all living systems are organized into a hierarchy and each level has its own emergent properties. And this leads us to the biological levels of organization. And I give a lot of detail in the lecture about that, but I would come, okay, biological organization, levels of organization. And I go down here. Here are these levels of organization. I talk about that the lowest level of organization is live, that is living is a cell. And a group of cells working together creates a tissue. So that's an emergent property. And a group of tissues working together creates an organ, emergent properties. And a group of organs creates an organ system. A group of organ systems creates an organism, which is one individual living thing. And a group of organisms of the same species creates a population. So I'm gonna go back to the review. Um, levels of organization, I'll start with cells, and then and you can do it however it makes you happy. Tissues, organs, and you can see what I'm doing here. Organ systems, organisms, population, okay. And then I'm gonna go to the next slide and it says a group of populations and I give more content on that is a community, group of communities with non-living aspects like rocks and water. So their physical characteristics are ecosystems and all the ecosystems together create the biosphere. So I'm gonna to continue to add to that community and um, ecosystem and then biosphere. And a biosphere is just the earth. So bio is life and sphere is circle. So biosphere. Okay. So those are the levels of organization all put together. And then you can kind of see that down here further on the review, I have some of these terms again. So this is where I go back to the notes and I kind of get a little bit more detailed. So I'll start with cells since that was the one that was there. I'm going to go back to my PowerPoint where I had cells and I am going to copy, just copy this content over. And, and I'm a formatter, so um, I like everything to look good. And then I'm gonna copy that. Okay, um, any, like I may give examples of cells, um, like a skin cell, skin cells. I'm a nerve cell. So I continue to add content to that. You can go and do the same thing for tissue from that slide. And so my goal is, is that, um, and I talk about in the lecture, tissues is a group of cells. I'm gonna finish this before I continue. Working together to carry out a specific function. This is an emergent property. Okay. Um, and so my goal is, is that as I go through the lecture, I continue, this is like a living document. I continue to add content to it. The best thing about those lectures being recorded is that you can pause them and then you can look at the PowerPoint notes. You can look at your exam review. And when you're ready to move on, you move on. Um, this does take you sitting down and making time to say, hey, I'm going to get through the first lecture video and I'm going to sit down until I can do that. And, you know, make sure you have a water and a snack so that the natural aspect of you to get up and do stuff um, and get distracted because things get hard is kind of curtailed because you have a snack, you have a water. 
Um, but you continue to add to this, this um, exam review document. One of my favorite things to do is, is add pictures from the notes on it because it helps, right? So um, like, for example, prokaryotes, I'm going to go further in the lecture. to where we talk about prokaryotes. So two types of cells right here, prokaryotic, and I talk about this in the lecture, okay? So I'm gonna copy this content over here, prokaryote. Pro means before, karyo means nucleus. So a prokaryote is an organism that doesn't have a nucleus, okay? And so I put that here as well. Then, um, Right here, I give some more examples of prokaryotes. So this is great information um, to have on my exam review. So I'm gonna copy it over. And then I personally would spend more time formatting it. Um, and actually I'm gonna do that right now because it would, it does bother me just to look at it. But you can see what I'm doing here. Um, I continue to work on collecting information to prepare myself for the exam. Then here, um, on within the notes, there is a diagram of a prokaryote. So I'm gonna screenshot that. Print screen, um, function print screen. I don't know if, oh, there it goes. I was like, it may not do it because I'm recording. I'm gonna get this. I'm gonna put this into my review too. Once I can get it to flip screens, there we go. Okay, and then of course I'm gonna make it smaller because I want it to all fit. But for um for those of you who are just starting and aren't really sure how to study, this is some great guidance on studying. Okay. For those of you who have been working with me, you can kind of see how I, I put things together um, and how I want it to be a living document. Um once you get all of this content together and you're constantly going over it, it's easy for what started off as maybe one to two pages on a review of just typed words, turns into eight, 10, maybe 15 pages of content. Um, and, and there's a difference between including content that you understand and just including words and definitions. So as you bring it over here and you're listening to me explain it in the lecture, you're becoming more comfortable with the information. Okay. So you're, again, you're hearing it, you're seeing me lecture it, and then you're creating your exam review document, all right? Um, and then I would love to say that all of these exam reviews are organized in order of the lecture, but they're not. Um, they tend to have groupings of words, like all of one chapter tends to be together, but I created the review as I was looking at the exam. So it's not perfect, okay? But like, for example, in this first lecture, I talk about anabolism or anabolic, um, catabolic, so you can go through, and I before I leave a lecture, um, as I'm reviewing, I check and see if I can add anything to any of the words, okay? Um, so do that as well, okay? Um, this is just some guidance and some study tips on how to put information together using the resources that you're given in order to prepare for the exam, okay? Again, you're not going to be just tested for definitions. The key is going to be, can you apply this information? All right. Um, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out via email or you can comment on this video and it will send me an email. Um, I appreciate your time and that is it.